Hi, welcome. Today I have Andra Davidson here with us. And I'm Leslie Garski with Garski Divorce Mediation. So glad to have you, Andra. You are the creator of the Better the Better Than Before Divorce program. And I'm so glad you're here because today you're going to talk to us a little bit about how to kind of have some coping strategies to deal with the overwhelm of divorce. And I know so many of our clients come in and they're just like, deer in the headlights, it's so hard to think straight. And then their friends are like, hey, you just need to know if you want to take that maintenance package or hey, you just need to sell your house and people are just walking into walls. So maybe you can help us unpack a little bit of that and give us some strategies today. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And um, I think one of the first problems in that scenario that you gave is the word just, right? Because so many times when we hear that word, other people saying, oh, you should just do this or just do that. It feels like it should be easy and obvious. And why are you making it difficult when the reality is that everything that happens under the umbrella of divorce is probably more challenging, more stressful, more overwhelming than that particular task would be in a different time in your life. So the first thing that I really like to remind everybody is to give themselves some grace and space to go through this particular aspect of your life, this time period, um, differently than you have in other situations, that there's there's room for that. Um, it's really okay. There's a reason why this part of your, this, this um, event is typically rated so high on the challenge scale. And it's because of all the different aspects of life that it affects, all the different um, emotional and decisions and all the overwhelm that it creates with getting so many different things done. And it's okay to take a step back and say, I'm just completely exhausted by all of this. Um, you don't have to, you don't owe anybody an explanation as to why that is the case. So I think that's the first thing that I really, really want to remind anybody who's dealing with divorce is that it is okay to not be okay. Um, that's very normal and expected. And that in fact, it's part of the process and to get through that process and come out better on the other side, which I believe we all have the potential to do going around it is an optional. You have to go through it, right? You have to go through it to come out better on the other side. You can't just, you know, hide from it and pretend you're going to wake up in a few months and come out different on the other side. It just doesn't work like that. And I think um, one thing that I always hear that I think is kind of a helpful reminder is that you're not stuck there forever. You've got a beginning, a middle and an end, and there is an end. And so, yeah, there I is. realize that you are going to get through it. Like you said, uh, yeah, that's a great way to think of it. And that's actually leads really nicely into another tip that I tell people a lot, which is to break it down into small pieces. Just start with one little thing that you can do, because that will help you, um, as you said, to move from, you know, the beginning, right, then toward the middle and eventually toward the end. Um, just doing one little thing at a time can make a huge difference. And the other thing that I really love to do for people is to sit down and help them think about their life post-divorce, not because we're going to get there tomorrow and not even that they need to try and move toward it today or tomorrow, but because in some of those dark times and moments, when you can imagine that goal that you have for yourself that is out there a little bit on the horizon, it gives you something positive to focus on and think about and get excited about and takes you out of that spiral in the moment of, you know, just being upset and going back and reliving things in the past or, you know, rereading things that you know really aren't helpful to reread. Um, whatever, it's so easy for anybody to get sucked into that. So A, give yourself a break if you do, because we all do it from time to time. But B, if you have 
a goal set out for, you know, what I want my life to look like, something I may be interested in doing. Um, maybe it's a place you want to travel to or someone you want to visit that you haven't seen in a long time or a class you want to take, whatever it is, put that out there as something that you're working toward. And it really does help you to move um, from where you might be stuck in that particular moment. Right. Yep. Look ahead and try to recreate it. Mean, it is an opportunity for a new beginning for sure. Although divorce can be so overwhelming, but if you do have yeah. something positive or something to look forward to, or, you know, I've always wanted to live, you know, in downtown such, you know, walk right. places, or I want to be out in the country and we can, you get enough right. to at least kind of reset a little bit. And that's nice to have those, that comfort and kind of that dreaming. I never had a dog in my whole life. I never had a dog. And when I got divorced, my ex-husband um, is very allergic to dogs and we couldn't have one. So one of these things I realized, oh my gosh, I can get a dog. <laughs> and, and I did. And it was really, um, it sounds like a little thing, but it was kind of a big deal for me and my kids, our family. And it's been a really lovely addition to my life in a way that I wouldn't have anticipated. And it did kind of get me excited of like, oh, this is something different that I've wanted that I can do just for me now. I can do that. Um, so that's, you know, one example, like you said, of something that just to get motivated. That's awesome. Yeah, that's fun. So now what'd you name your dog? You Got to tell us the dog's name. No, his name is Ozzy. Yeah. He's, yeah. <laughs> My kids what kind? For all the he's dog lovers Aussie out there. Aussie doodle. Dog? Yep. He's oh, an yeah. Aussie doodle. He's oh, a no. black and white, adorable, oh. um, dog. Yes. He's a lot of, a lot of energy, but, um, quite the um, positive addition to our family in so many ways. Yeah. It's been a really great thing to have a dog for the first time. We've loved it. Yeah. Therapeutic too, you know, kind of so you much. Dog. Yeah, definitely a therapy dog. <laughs> well, now are there any other tips that you might give someone on the overwhelm or things to do? Practice? Yeah. Yeah. So another tip that I like to share with people is that you don't have to do everything all by yourself. Um, I think to engage a healthy support system is one of the most important aspects of getting through this process. And I like to say to start with someone who you know has your back 100%. So for me, that was my sister and a really dear friend. I knew that whatever shape I came to them in, and it wasn't always good shape, that they would be there for me and not try to change where I was in that process, right? But just accept where I was and be there for me. And part of the beauty in that was not just them being there for me, but there was a lot of growth for me in asking for that kind of help, which I'm not so good at doing. And it's a real um, opportunity for you as the person who's going through the process and whoever it is that you're asking for a little bit of support to both come together and find how you can do that for each other. Um, and it has improved. I wouldn't say that there was our relationship so much needed improving, but it has added dimension to it in a way that's been really lovely. Um, that's been really positive. So um, people generally like to help someone that they care about very much. So if you ask for that, chances are the people who care about you are going to be happy to do that. Um, so there's setting up that support system. And then I like to figure out what your priorities are during the process. So for example, maybe it's that you're home for dinner every night, or maybe it's that you get a workout in before you go to work every day, or that you take a walk on certain afternoons. So whatever it is, I like to really be clear about what those are, write them down, and then figure out how do your asks, how do you align your asks to make those needs happen? So if it's the dinner thing, for example, if you want to be home for dinner every night, then maybe um, the cooking it is too much, but maybe your friends are willing to drop it off a couple nights a week so that you can be home for dinner. You can rush out of work and get home, but you don't necessarily have to cook it too. So how could you get those needs that you have, those desires met with the asks that you're, that you have um, and, and who might be willing to help you and thinking through that and putting it together also sort of clarifies what is important to you, which can be really valuable as well. So you realize like, oh yeah, it's good for me to get a workout in, um, you know, three or four days a week. It's good for me to go out on a walk and get fresh air, whatever that looks like for you. 
And then to line up your your asks to meet those needs can be really helpful. Maybe you need childcare. Maybe you need someone to help you, uh, you know, pick up or drop off a kid. So setting that up um, to take care of yourself um, can be really, really valuable. So that support system can be big. And the other piece of that that I'll offer is um, you could ask people to help you share messages to friends and family too. Um, oh, that's huge. So you don't have to say it over and over. Yeah. Over. Yeah, exactly. So you can decide, I think, you know, a lot of us, we really have like three circles, really. There's like the inner core people, right. That you will probably talk to, um, one-on-one -on -one most likely, but even then not always, maybe your immediate family or a best friend or whatever that is. Then there's the one circle out from that, which is, you know, close friends and family, um, and people that, probably need to be updated and want to know what's going on in your life, but that you don't necessarily have to make a phone call to each time individually. Um, and then there's that outer circle of like, I call those the, you know, people you run into at the grocery store or work colleagues, right. They, that will ask you, Oh, what's going on in your life. And you might get that deer in the headlight expression again of, Oh my gosh, I have to talk about this and I don't want to. Um, so when you can come up with a couple of messages to share with people in each of those circles, then think about how you communicate it. For example, my sister helped me share information with family because I just, it was too much for me to do. So she made some of those calls. And in some cases, you know, I sent out an email, like I just, I know I don't see you all that often, but I want you to know what's happening and I appreciate your love and support. Um, and then you, you get a little more comfortable with it too. You don't feel like you have to reinvent it every time somebody asks you. Right. Um, yeah. So, and if that is something that's helpful um, to anybody who's watching, you are welcome to go to my website. I have a free communications planner that you can download and it helps you create messages for friends and family um, and a mission statement for yourself and a divorce mission statement, which I also found to be really useful and gives you an example of what those look like. Um, so anybody who wants that is welcome to go download it for free um, at my website, which is better than before divorce.com. That's awesome. So now thank you. So those are really helpful. So can you also just spend a minute or so telling us a little bit about your online course? Cause it might be something yeah. people would like to, you know, hear about this and go to your website and oh my gosh, this whole course that you've developed. Yeah. And um, I hope that people will give themselves um, this gift, if you will, of support that is really affordable and effective. And they don't have, they can do it on their own time from home. Um, there's no coaching relationship involved. It's an online course that specifically addresses the emotional um, overwhelm, stress, some of the typical pain points of getting through divorce and gives you tools to get through it. Um, each module there's four modules that have several videos within them they all have exercises to personalize it for your own situation um, and a workbook that goes with it so that you can keep track of everything keep organized and then also um, a uh, membership if they want to join in my facebook group so that you can connect with other people who are experiencing divorce. That's optional. If you you know want to stay anonymous, totally fine. You don't have to join it, but it is there for people who want it. And I like to check in there a lot. And I do some free webinars and information on there and um, answer questions. So it's also provides some real time interaction and support if that's something that would be valuable. So it's, yeah. and it's really reasonable. It's $220. So I really feel like getting this kind of support during divorce isn't, you know, um, extra it's essential. So I want to make it available to as many people as possible. And I hope that, um, I hope it can be useful. Well, I think that's amazing. And the coolest thing is that, well, first of all, it's not cool that divorce is very isolating and you can feel so isolated. You don't yeah. know to talk to people, you're working, you got your kids, you're dealing with all this. So if you can do this course on your own in your own time and not adding it something, you know, oh, I've got to be somewhere at four o'clock then to do right. this interactive stuff. But it's so cool that you're able to do that. And then also get the community of the Facebook group. That's cool because it's a closed group, right? They have yes, to come yes. to your that's amazing. And yes, then it's clients only who are part of that. Right. So everybody, I have to approve anybody who 
comes in, right? So um, I know what the, you know, what the group is, that's right. And the beauty of the online course is exactly what you said. And you can go back to an area that you want to focus on or sort of move ahead to something. So if what you need to focus on right now is, you know, hot buttons and triggers or an apologies, or what does a best self-divorce look like? I cover all those things. You can go back to that area, you know, 10 times if you want to, because the videos are short, they're five to 15 minutes, um, because I know how it feels to be in that situation. And it is overwhelming. And it is um, so hard. The hardest thing is just to go on the website and get it. I promise that's the hardest part. The rest will start to like nurture you, I hope, and feel good. That's fabulous. Well, I'm so glad that you shared that with us and people can go to your website. We're going to have it put up there. And it's also when they clicked into this uh, Zoom video that they'll be able to get that and have a link right to your uh, your website. Yeah. So thank you so much, Andra. You are wonderful and such a a great resource for people who, who need that support for sure. And I appreciate what you do. Well, I appreciate what you guys do as well. And I'm grateful to be a resource for people. I hope, uh, I hope I can do that. Well, thank you so much for being on today. Take care. Thank you.